Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. In our last video, we looked at the unboxing of this hot air rework station. This is the uh, Sparkfun uh, 303D, and we played around some with soldering and unsoldering this stuff. And what I wanted to do is uh, pull this thing apart and see what it looks like on the inside. So externally, so we had talked about how the heating element in the wand is replaceable and we're going to pop the wand open and look at things inside. Uh, externally, if we kind of look at the bottom, now this thing's obviously has got the padded feet here, but also it looks like something on the inside is suspended on grommets, which is usually a good sign that uh, the engineers who designed this actually took a tiny amount of time to figure out how to make it a little less noisy. If I had to guess the pump for the air is sitting on these grommets, but externally that's about all you can tell. So let's go ahead and pop it open and see what's going on inside. To pop the case open, it looks like they just have a series of screws all around the edges here. I'm hoping I don't have to take the mount off. Here. The cover is just a simple folded over a piece of metal. Let's get around this way. Now what we're expecting to find is let's say there's going to be an air pump. The air pump is what blows air through this way and some sort of rudimentary control circuit for that. Probably some sort of simple microcontroller. Uh, and there's going to be a circuit for controlling the temperature of the heating element because that has to be a feedback loop type system. Because, while well, as with the airflow, uh, you're basically setting a percentage, and the percentage is a percentage of you know whatever the pump is capable of, kind of thing. Although, you do have to do some. Um, uh, tricks to make sure that the airflow is roughly linear because most you know, most pumps the kinds that you use in here would be like a impeller style and the output of an impeller style pump is uh, fundamentally not linear it's kind of a kind of a curve exponential that the faster you spin it the more air you get but it's not if you spin it twice as fast, you won't, you'll get more than twice as much air. So it's, it's kind of an exponential. <clears throat> so we might be able to see how they're doing the uh, control circuitry for that. But if it's inside the microcontroller, you know, you can't really at least uh, very easily suck the program out of the microcontroller. And even then you're just looking at, you know, machine code, maybe assembly at, at, at best. So the other thing is that the heating element's gonna have the feedback loop circuit because you're actually displaying in a real temperature. And when you're displaying a real temperature, you have to have something that senses the temperature in the wand. And so the wand has to have, at the, at the very bare minimum, three wires in it, you know, a ground, uh, the heating element, and a temperature sensor. But if the wand is, you know, Better than that, it'll have four or maybe five wires where two wires are dedicated to the heating element and two more or possibly even a third for the temperature sensor. And we'll be able to see how many wires are actually going out to the wand. To do that. 
Yeah, the screw on the back here is different than the rest of them, which I think is kind of odd. Alrighty, now that we've got all the screws out, let's go ahead and center her up and pop open the cover. There we go. And the very first thing we come to when we open it is, it looks like the zip ties here that hold the tank on are broken. That it looks like they popped. That the zip ties look like they go all the way around. There's this little tank, which just barely has some adhesive on it, like double stick tape. If I turn it this way a little bit, you can kind of see the double stick tape here, but the zip ties look like they busted. That's interesting. Oh, we stick that on more evenly. So the tank is supposed to sit like that, which it does look like if you can kind of tell that the pump here is sitting on those grommets we saw right down here. And that the, if we kind of poke at it, the pump does support some <coughs> uh, vibration suspension or whatever you want to call it. That something interesting here is that uh, in the front here, maybe difficult to see from that angle, you have like a little bump stop that the the pump can't travel forward any more than that and can't travel back any more than that. So let's see here, how many wires does the wand have? And Let's see here, they've got everything sort of zip tied together right here. So it's <clears throat> difficult to tell. Brown, oh, looks like the wand has Four wire? No, five wires. Yeah, it looks like the one has five wires. Uh, we've got two wires come over here, which is red and brown. Uh, right there, the red and brown wires would most likely be the heating element wires because they are thicker than this green and blue wire that comes over here, which is most likely uh, the temperature sensor because these wires are much skinnier than the wires over here and then there's a yellow wire Which comes out here and is attached right there to like a grounding lug Which uh, looking at the mains wiring here oh, There's a See they don't have a bump stop on this side, but they have a bump stop over here. So they have three bump stops all the way around. Um, the mains wiring looks okay, I guess. I don't like the fact that the wiring kind of rests up against this bump stop, which it's not sharp on the corners per se. Like it's not gonna cut my finger open, but it could, you know, over time put a gouge in the wiring. Uh, the fuse looks like it's right in the main uh, plug here that if you, <laughs> the QC sticker fell off. That you uh, pop this little compartment open and then that has the fuse inside. And then the ground lead here comes over to this stud here. Let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. There we go. So the ground leak comes over here to the stud. It's got, you know, a lock washer on it, which is not bad. And then this yellow wire is the wire that goes off to the wand. Now that I basically have the zoom set up here, let's take a quick look at the zip ties here. And because it looks like, let's see, 
hard time focusing these them out a little bit. It kind of looks like these zip ties broke because the edges here are very, very jagged and it, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to tell. But this one actually looks like it's got like a, a secondary crack in it that the whole thing was getting ready to break. Oh, there we go. That if we just kind of push down on it that that zip tie was ready to go and uh, we'll have to pull pull this apart which it looks like the zip ties just kind of wrap all the way around it there's nothing super duper special about it but I will probably grab uh, some zip ties not in this video but just kind of generally speaking and uh, rewrap them around this tank that not, or maybe the zip ties were cheap or just the stresses of shipping this thing caused them to break and you know, the, the tank to pop off. You saw how it was sitting cattywampus in there. Now what this tank is, is this tank sort of works like a capacitor, but for air that this pump here um, sucks air in. If I had to guess through there's a hole over here and a hole over here. And then these two sides of the pump bring the air this way. The air then comes into the tank and then some amount of pressure forms inside the tank. And then this comes down here. And if we kind of bring it over this way and zoom in a little bit. Like that, there we go that this is the output to the wand here and that you have this rubber connection this way and this is where the air pressure leaves through here through this rubber sleeve and uh, this uh, cord grip here this white one uh, actually seals around the wire so air is not leaking back over this way and the idea behind this tank is that this tank holds some volume of pressure and pressure doesn't like to change instantly, kind of like a voltage in a capacitor. And so even if there are pulses of pressure coming up into this tank because of the volume, that volume will absorb some of that pulsing and provide a more steady airflow out to the wand. Something to note while I disassemble I want to pull the front panel off here is that on SparkFun's website the only review of this uh, station had actually mentioned that problem that the zip ties on his unit were broken and the tank had actually completely come off which it looks like this the adhesive on this tank is not holding very well and then he had to open the unit up and uh, zip tie that tank back on, which is not, not it's not something you want to do, but it's not the most terrible thing in the world. And so let's pop this hose off just because it's easier to disconnect over on this side and then kind of gently go through and disconnect all of our connectors here. which so far, this is actually one of the cleaner setups that I've seen. Let me try and get the pump. Like that. I'm going to have to leave the ground lug attached just for simplicity. Oh, come on. Yeah. Maybe let's see if we can pop it off. Is that some sort of standard size? No, of course it's not. Let 
temperature sensor can stay attached. The one heating element can stay attached, but <clears throat> let's pop the zip tie off for this whole thing and disconnect the mains like that. There we go, and uh, let me grab something to remove that. Alrighty, I went ahead and undid that nut in washer, and I did it off camera to keep the cringe factor to a minimum because I did it with pliers. And so now let's take a better look here at the front panel. And I did sort of peek in back here to see that this panel is a, a effectively a single sided load except for the screen and a couple of other things like the mounting for the potentiometers here. And so I'm not going to actually pull it off of this to look at the other side because there's not a whole lot of interesting things to look at. But let's just let's put it up so right side up and just kind of generally look at the topology here. The mains input comes in right here. That um, it looks like, let's see here, depending on where it comes in, I think that uh, either, you know, depending on if you put, uh, I think one wire is common that guy I'll show you here let me uh, kick it over into the uh, macro mode here all right here is that mains connector i was talking about that right on it it says 220 in or 110 in which at first i was thinking that maybe depending on the pin that you switched to would vary what um, the thing can handle so you can easily switch it back and forth but if you look over here it looks like there's a connector that gets moved from one location to another location depending on what the voltage is and if you um, carefully look at the traces here that this bottom one is the same and if we kind of follow this up over this way it looks like this might be the neutral the same for both but this top trace over here i'm trying to do it with this it comes up to the top but then over on this one it comes through this way and maybe catches it on this pin here which would indicate that this is the connector that goes to the transformer and so it's bring it's grabbing the taps on the transformer at different places and so to convert this thing to a different voltage just this connector gets moved to a different location which if you look carefully the, the way the silk screen sits you flip this thing over to the other side so the, the this pin comes down here and this one comes up there and the, then that taps the uh, transformer differently Continue to look this board over. Um, so the mains comes in here, and if we kind of follow the down this way, we have the transformer output, and then we have this guy here, which I have not looked that up, but it does resemble like that might be a triac because these three guys here look like our triac opto optocouplers. In that this is most likely how this unit gets that um, whenever you turn the main switch off and on if the unit is hot it will continue to run up until <clears throat> the temperature drops low enough and that it looks like that's how it's achieving that effect is that this is able to effectively bypass this big switch back here and provide power through here to the transformer and the other things um, to wait until the temperature drops here just kind of i didn't measure or anything but just kind of from looking at the orientation of how things are set up that this is the mains input 
and it looks like this is what's driving the heating element which comes out over here and so the heating element looks like might be running at you know input voltage 110 or whatever which it would have been nice to see some isolation there but it's not super duper required if we kind of continue to follow that this way this is most likely the feedback loop type thing for um, the so i'm looking for the um, temperature that obviously you have the temperature sensor, which is up here, but that these look a lot like um, current shunt resistors. And so there's actually this thing has two uh, feedback loops. It looks like that whatever is driving the <clears throat> triac here is also monitoring what the current is through that heating element maybe for a safety if the current gets too high it'll shut down and that uh, that the second optocoupler so that this middle one drives the triac for turning you know the shutting the thing down this left one is driving probably another triac for controlling the heating element over here and this third Optocoupler is driving this triac, which drives the pump, which the pump connection is this one right down here. So again, the pump looks like it might be you know, 110 volt as well, because it said the way this thing is just sort of set up that all of the power stuff is down here. And then all of the control stuff is up here. So if we look up here, let me catch the light just right. There we go. It is a PIC microcontroller that runs it. This is a PIC 16F916. And this PIC microcontroller, you know, just the temp is reading this temperature sensor over here that the close proximity between the temperature sensor and the PIC puts it right there uh, there is a programming header you can tell that uh, was it v, VC VP G and D D A and C L are the uh, <coughs> labels we can see over here which is a classic programming set for the pick here um, this connector right here is where the transformer connects. So uh, I looked at the transformer, it's a nine volt transformer. So the transformer is dropping its voltage onto this section right here, which looks like just a simple regulation section. Although I'm curious what this button is about because it's just um, a momentary contact button here that doesn't make sense why it would be in the power regulation section. So that's curious. I don't know what's going on with that. <clears throat> and that's really about it as far as everything goes. Uh, this does look like some type of isolation here between the current sen sensing section over here and you know, the microcontroller over here that so maybe this is used more as a safety that if the you know voltage drop across the current shunt which does look like they put a high voltage symbol over here so that this is probably a high voltage section and the optocoupler turns on to signal the micro that something's wrong go ahead and shut her down all right let's take more of a bird's eye view of this that mains kind of comes down this way the uh, output to the transformer a uh, pump drive over here looks like no heat sinks on the pump drive or the shutoff which they were kind of precariously bent but not a big deal i kind of don't like the fact that they're sort of unsupported by anything uh, this is the drive for the heating element in the one and then the, these are the current sense resistors and then this is the output to the one 
temperature sensor microcontroller. This is that power section with the weird button. And that's really all she wrote as far as the control panel goes. And now let's go ahead and pull the wand apart and see how easy the heating element is actually to change. So here is the wand. There are three screws holding it together. And the wand actually brings me to my first gripe. And that is if I use a regular screwdriver that I can't, I have a hard time getting inside the hole with a number two Phillips. Even though these are number two Phillips screws inside. So I figured, oh, my favorite screwdriver, you know, this tends to be just a smidgen thick. And so let me grab a normal number two screwdriver. And hey, guess what? Same thing. It doesn't quite fit in there. This one on here is not that bad, but these two, it like doesn't fit at all. So I have to gingerly use a number one to do this. Then that just kind of, it doesn't fit the screw nearly as nicely, which it kind of feels like the screw is a plastic tapper meaning that it's not, <clears throat> there's no metal threads on the other side. Let's well, just kind of looking at the screw. Yeah, it's definitely a plastic tapper. gingerly pulls apart. So this is annoying to do with the number one screwdriver because it kind of slips all the time. This would have been nicer to do with the number two, but I don't have a number two that's skinny enough to fit down in here. Okay, so. Let's gingerly pull this apart. which it's not really wanting to come apart. It almost feels like it might be glued. Cause there's kind of like this white stuff you can kind of see on either side, which if I kind of pull apart here, it wants to come apart, but doesn't. There does appear to be some sort of adhesive sitting in here. Cause as I'm, so I'm trying to split the case here by running my knife through it, which seems to be helping. Just got to be careful not to stab myself. But it is coming apart slowly. That maybe that's to ease with assembly. But man, this thing sure does not want to come apart. So if the, the heating element is that difficult to get out that I may just stop and not continue trying to take it out because I'll end up destroying the wand more than anything else, but it is kind of sucky that it's that difficult to get this thing apart. Oh, come on. There Almost like I'm cutting the adhesive as I'm bringing this apart. Ooh, ow. Yeah, I just cut myself. That's lovely. Oof. Yeah, 
this this thing anything but wants to open up so, so i think just for the sake of not destroying the wand i'm gonna put the screws back in it and go ahead and reassemble it but uh it's just a tiny bit disappointing that i can't easily open the wand i figured you would take the three screws out and this thing would come apart so changing you know if you do have an element that goes out that's going to be very painful <laughs> to change yeah don't cut yourself opening this thing up if you do have to do it but um that's it and that's it i'm gonna <clears throat> go ahead and put some zip ties on here and go ahead and reassemble it so I did find I've got some zip ties, but of course the zip ties are not long enough to go all the way around it. So I have to string two zip ties together to do this. And maybe I'll do this off camera so I don't look like a complete idiot trying to struggle and get this thing, these things, oh. get these things all the way through. Which actually that one wasn't that bad. that and I don't know what'd be easier so stick the zip tie over on this side and then bring it through over here because I do want to try and keep the zip ties out of the bump stops Pretty reasonable. Which, by the way, not the correct way to cut a zip tie. It's better to do this with side cuts. But at this point, oh well. All right, I'm going to leave this one just in case I need to tension that one. And go ahead and do the same thing with this one, which actually there we go. It was easier to bring it through the same way I did that one. underneath here Okay, there we go, easy peasy. The tank is now, well, once again, permanently attached. Yeah, I'll cut that off camera. <clears throat> Alrighty, that was a teardown of the Spark Fun Electronics. We go, uh, 303D hot um, air rework station, or what, SMD rework station with a digital type display as we saw the electronics in this thing are actually pretty nice and clean you know there's not a whole lot of gripes here the uh, two gripes that i did have were that as i mentioned the zip ties were broken <clears throat> on the pump and so now I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but in just a single review of the station that was on Sparks Phone website, this was mentioned as one of the flaws. And so, you know, they did, the review did actually portray it. And the fact that the wand is so difficult to open that it's a, it looks like it's glued closed, even though the instructions here said which i did look at 
just says unscrew uh, unscrew three screws used to fasten the handle uh, part one two three of figure one uh, to move conduit out open handle uh, figure two and so it doesn't mention anything about having adhesive holding this closed or prying it open or whatnot and oh well but otherwise as i said the station looks pretty good the terminals look okay we did have that nice um, shake proof washer holding the ground in place which is good that all of the terminals uh, look okay and that more or less you know or the fact that the pump is actually sitting on a little suspension but more or less this thing is a pretty reasonable station that if you have any questions or comments you're welcome to post them down below and uh, don't forget to give me a big old thumbs up and thank you for watching